All right. So first off, let's talk about the Jedi just a little bit more. Um, I really appreciate a lot of what Anna brought forward around the insights of the Jedi in Star Wars. Um, and I'd like to expound upon that and say, you know, the Jedi is not just a concept that George Lucas came up with in Star Wars. Um, there is a concept in ancient Egypt that is known as the Jed. And the Jed is the D-J-E-D, -E as we translate it, um, is known as the pillar between worlds. It's a staff in all of the drawings. And if you go to Egypt and you look at the hieroglyphs, you'll see an image that looks like a pillar and it goes up to the top. And then there's these three lines near the top of the pillar. Now, in Egyptian cosmology, the idea is that this pillar connects all the worlds together and that these three lines represent the lines of human consciousness. In other words, how we perceive the universe. And in the stack of this pillar, it's just a small spectrum that is our general perception. Um, but that general perception is split into three worlds, which is the gross, etheric, and astral world, or as we more are more familiar with calling them, the physical worlds, our emotional worlds, and our mental worlds. And if we understand that our reality and our perceptions of our reality are really sculpted by these three layers of our experience, then we also get to understand that we can change and adapt all of our experience just by changing our proficiency in dealing with experiences on each of these layers. What's also important to understand about these three layers is that in Egyptian magic, the understanding is that you can connect your physical, emotional, and mental layers together. And when you fully do that and you engage your spirit, which transcends them all, you begin to align yourself with your deepest purpose and your highest work in your, in your life. And you are also given the gift of being able to then manifest and create literally resonating the Jed to change the world and the fabric of space time around you. You can think of it like a tuning fork that when struck and the fork is completely unrestricted, all three layers of your being, your physical, emotional, and mental being vibrate out into the fabric of space time and begin to ripple through that quantum vacuum and change the conditions around you. Now, users of the Jed and the wisdom keepers of the Jed have often in Egypt been called the Jedi. Now, there are a variety of different stories that have come through different hieroglyphics about the Jedi. And some of those stories uh, articulate the Jedi as a group of magi who helped to build the pyramids and unpacked a lot of the secrets of construction around Egypt. And there are other stories that point the finger saying there is one person named Jedi. Um, but I'm much, much more inclined to believe that the former is the case and that the understanding of the Jedi is simply uh, a term that refers to these magi who understood this fundamental concept around the flow of the universe. The, world, the word Jedi is also present in other cultures. Um, it's present in Kabbalah. Um, under the form Jedediah, and it also plays a role in a, in a variety of other forms um, throughout the world. But uh, if you want to explore a little bit more about the understandings of the Jedi and their relationship to the serpent of Kundalini and also the dragons throughout space-time, um, I highly recommend reading the book by Mark Pinkham um, called Return of the Serpent Bearers of Wisdom. It's a fantastic book which covers a lot of the history of the dragon tribes on this planet and they're spread from uh, Lemuria through, uh, or Mu more appropriately, uh, through Atlantean civilizations and then out into different areas around the world. So that's a great resource for you guys to pick up uh, when you have a chance.